Welcome back to Red Devils TV, the realist channel on YouTube. This is Manchester United versus Brighton preview. Now, this is going to be the last game of the 23-24 campaign and hopefully we can end it on a high before our massive game against Man City in the FA Cup final. But we are going away from home. It, we, obviously, our record hasn't been the best away from home in our most recent games. But let's actually talk about Brighton because for me personally, this season compared to last season, they've massively fallen off. I feel that's because a lot of teams have figured out De Zerbi's tactics and how to actually beat them and hopefully Man United can be amongst one of them teams who can defeat Brighton I mean they've recently just lost to uh, Chelsea so it is going to be a I'd say an easier game from what United have really been dealt with in recent times obviously the Crystal Palace thrashing obviously that was very unfortunate a bit of a freak result but United were just com just completely outworked and outmatched in that game Arsenal it was understandable they didn't really get out a second gear and United didn't really challenge them enough but due to our selected options but the Newcastle game is where we've completely turned it around 3-2 three, three, was the result and a lot of Jordi fans have said that United didn't deserve to win that game obviously the penalty possibility on Anthony Gordon I do agree on that that should have been a penalty but unfortunately it wasn't and this is why VAR needs to go but let's actually talk about the way Brighton set up and they set up quite similar to Manchester United in that 4-2-3-1 formation and I do believe that Pascal Gross is going to be their key player I mean he's been their best player all season he's got the most assists from midfield and I honestly think he is probably now the only Brighton player you could probably fit into a combined 11 with this Manchester United side you know United are short in midfield and Pascal Gross is one of the more biggest chance creators in the league this season and I think he's very underrated and is definitely bigger than playing for Brighton but obviously, compared to last season, Brighton were a force of nature. It obviously, De Zerbi was relatively new to the Premier League. And even Pep Guardiola praised his tactics and his system. But like I said, this season, he's kind of been figured out. Obviously, they're struggling for 10th place. I feel like that them being in Europe in the Europa League really set them back, obviously, with multiple injuries as well. I just feel like with a team like Brighton, they're just not ready for qualifying for Europe. I mean, who am I to say as well? Manchester United might not qualify for Europe. And I do believe we will we might get conference league and we also might get europa league if we somehow win the fa cup which i am feeling a bit more positive towards as edison has been ruled out with a fractured eye socket so it's a setback for city but they've also got an amazing number two in ortega but anyway that preview will be coming out in a few days but anyway if you're this far into the video as well make sure you leave a like on the video subscribe if you are new comment down below your predictions for the brighton game and yeah just get it say anything else you want about the game but obviously let's talk about manchester united and i said it in my match reaction against newcastle but i was wrong about ahmad diallo i need to say it again because the fact that he's been sitting on the bench for so long it kind of frustrates me now that he was on the bench for so long and he just looks like that player that we've lacked some 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 danger off the right wing and can opposite and, and cause a threat because let's be honest when Ganacho plays on the right he's not his best Antonet is a very controversial player some players like him some fans don't but for me I think I just feel very mixed opinions on him but I do feel like we should be selling Antony but as well we still haven't finished paying off Ajax for the transfer fee because of how much we spent on Antony. I also want to bring back Rasmus Hoyland and Lissandro Martinez into this game because this is our last game before the Manchester City game so I feel like that with Eric and I kind of need to experiment with the starting 11 a little bit and I feel like the team that Tenag selects against Brighton is the team that's going to be playing in the FA Cup final and the players I want to see in that game this is going to be my predicted 11 Andre Onana in net Juan Basaka at right back with Dallo at left back uh, Casemiro at centre back and Lissandro Martinez now I know that's very very controversial but at the end of the day Casemiro is a lot better than Johnny Evans and I don't really think Eric Snag will experiment with Willy Cambuela in that FA Cup final when it comes to starting. He might bring him on for that extra defensive body if we do need it in the City game but I don't think he starts. I think we need to see Lissandro Martinez start after he came off uh, the bench against Newcastle so he seemed to be getting stuck into challenges. He made two, tackle, two out of two tackles against Newcastle so we kind of want to see Lissandro Martinez start. He might not play the full 90 minutes but I I would definitely want to see him start. So, like I said, we need to. This will be our last actual game 
before we play Man City. So I feel like that tonight needs to go with a strong 11 that will possibly start against Man City. The midfield three is where it gets interesting, but we definitely have to keep uh, Bruno Fernandes and Amrabat and Menu in that midfield. But the only question is, is where do we fit Scott McTominay? Because I felt like he played really well against uh, Newcastle, but will he fit into this team is the big question. Maybe come off the bench with a possibility, but we'll have to see. Maybe he'll rest Menu. I'm not too sure, but I, with Scott McTominay he has got a bit of a question mark around it because he did play really well against Newcastle, obviously. When Bruno Fernandes got took off for Ericsson as well, Bruno Fernandes gave Scott McTominay the armband. So I don't think Scott McTominay is going to get sold in the summer, in my personal opinion, if Bruno Fernandes is handing him the captain's armband. Clearly, McTominay is going to be vice-captain now that a few players are leaving the club. But wingers, Ahmad Diallo has to stay in this team. But Ganacho is where it gets interesting because Marcus Rashford obviously also came off the bench against Newcastle and... He looked all right for from what I saw. Obviously, he didn't score, unlike Rasmus Hoyland, but he was he was pacing, he was sprinting, he looked a lot more fresh from what we've saw of Marcus Rashford this season. So, and Ganacho's played a lot of games, so maybe resting Ganacho could be a possibility. But will Eric Tanag like drop or rotate Ganacho? That's the, that's a million dollar question. But one player who definitely should be starting is Rasmus Hoyland. Obviously, he was benched against Newcastle. I'm not going to say dropped. He was benched because, let's be honest, he has not received much service. He has been looking knackered recently. And this could be a possibility as well. We might not see Rasmus Hoyland start again. Marcus Rashford could be well as the number nine. So Eric Tenag could be going for something completely different. But this is just the predicted 11 that I am going for. As from the performance that I saw against Newcastle. I am honestly going to go for a 2-0 victory for Man United. End it on a clean sheet. You're away from home. The three points is what it matters. Now, a lot of fans, including myself, are on the fence about do we deserve European football? And I feel like that as a United fan, we cannot not accept being in Europe. But it could do us good not being in Europe at the same time. It really depends on how you feel about it as a fan. For me, I would much rather see us not in Europe at all, especially if we get Conference League football, because I just feel like that that just speaks volumes for where Manchester United are at a club at the moment. And you saw it at Arteta when he first joined Arsenal, that that just focus on domestic trophies and the Premier League to you know build your way up is the best way while your club is in a transition and a rebuild. So, and especially if Eric Tenag does stay at Manchester United, we do need to have... Um, we do need to have uh, our backup plan almost, but I do think Manchester United will qualify for Europe, whether that's Europa League or Conference League, that is a million dollar, dollar question, but I am confident going into this game, I saw something last night in the players that I haven't seen in recent times, and there was passion, there was motive, there was drive, there was energy, and considering we've been playing very flat recently, it was a positive um, thing to witness when it comes to how we've played recently, like I've just said. But Brighton don't count them out. Despite them falling off this season and not being as good as they were last season, we still can't underestimate them. They have got some decent players. That uh, João Pedro as well. He's a very decent player. But Pascal Gross is where we really need to be careful of because I think he's an amazing player and definitely is our top half of the table quality player. I'd definitely take him at United as a maybe rotation option or even possibly in a starting eleven because he's got a Premier League experience. He's what 27, 28 years old. So you know he could say he's in his prime. And I just feel like that with the chances he creates he has kind of saved Brighton this season. He's definitely been their player of the season, in my opinion. Now, I haven't watched Brighton all season long, but Pascal Gross is definitely going to be a threat against Manchester United. And finally, their captain, Lewis Dunk, is out for this game, which could be a positive because I'm not sure what the Dutch centre-back's called, but I think it's Van something. But he seems to be an all-right defender. But, Pat, but Lewis Dunk is the main defender in that Brighton defence. So hopefully... Rasmus Hoyland can maybe have a bit of an easier day at the office, we could say, and you know get his confidence up because we saw what happened in after Boxing Day when he scored against Aston Villa. He went on a crazy running streak. I think it was eight goals in six games Rasmus Hoyland went on to score. So hopefully after scoring that goal against Newcastle to come off the bench, his confidence is a lot higher 
than what it has been recently and hopefully he can grab a goal or two because we don't know what the scoreline's going to be. But based on the opposition and based on how we've played recently, ignoring the uh, Newcastle game, I would say that it will be a tricky game, but I am going to go for a 2-0 victory for Manchester United. If you've made this far into the video, make sure you leave a like on the video, subscribe if you are new, comment down below your predictions for Brighton, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.